Hello everyone and welcome again to Be on the Track. In this 53rd episode today, we are going to introduce you to Amit from Univade and Vijay Raghavan from Fast Enough. Be on the Track, as you know, is a series of episodes to actually introduce you to expert talk and expert speak in these tough times when we are not able to run across. Hyderabad Runners, as an initiative, promotes fitness to a lot of ambassadors and a lot of events that we run across the years. A quick thought that as we continue onto this webinar, any questions that you have, please continue to post them over in the comment section of our Facebook page and we will pick them up right from here. As we go ahead into the webinar, we hope we are staying safe and all of us are staying healthy back at home. To speak to Amit and to speak to Vijay today, we have our own nutritionist and co-runner, Lahiri Sutraneni, out over here in this particular webinar. And without further ado, I would like to welcome Lahiri and ask her over to take over and facilitate the webinar with Amit and Vijay. Over to you, Lahiri. Thank you, Revati, for the introduction. Hello viewers, welcome once again to Beyond the Track webinar series. In this 53rd webinar, we have two very interesting speakers who are going to speak to us about nutrition supplements during the next one hour. Our first speaker, Mr. Vijay Raghavan Venugopal, is the co-founder and the CEO of nutrition brand Fast Enough. Vijay has over 20 years of experience as a professional and has also led one of India's biggest pharma companies in China. He's also an avid sports enthusiast and an eight, three time, eight times sub three hour marathoner. Welcome, Vijay. Thanks, Lahiri. Uh, pleasure to be with the Hyderabad runners. In fact, uh, I had run my first half marathon and uh, another full marathon in 2012 and 13. So it's been a long time of uh, being with the Hyderabad running group. Thank you. Great, great. Uh, and our next speaker today is Mr. Amit Mehta. A staunch vegan nature lover and trail runner, Amit decided to follow his passion for sports and veganism and founded Unived back in 2010. As India's first vegan dietary supplement and sports nutrition company, it has pioneered many first-to-market products such as pea protein, endurance gels, plant-based vitamin D3, and many more. Welcome, Amit. Hi, good evening. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Really looking forward to speaking with you and interacting with Vijay as well today. Great, guys. So today's session is going to be more of a discussion rather than presentation. And uh, we'll also be taking questions during our discussion from our Facebook audience. And uh, we don't have to wait till the end to answer their questions. We'll be taking questions as they come along. So... Um, I would personally like to, you know, considering both of you are entrepreneurs who've been in this field for so long, I'd like to know, we'd like to know how has the scenario or uh, the scene of nutrition supplements or dietary supplements changed over the last decade? So um, I'd like to uh, know, Vijay, can you please uh, give your input on this? Well, uh, sufficient to say that uh, we have come a long way. Uh, in terms of sports nutrition. So when I started uh, getting back to running in 2012, uh, there was very little of nutrition around and uh, I mean, very little knowledge about running itself. And there were pioneers uh, in the form of multiple running groups across the country, like Hyderabad, Bangalore, uh, doing their bit in terms of propagating running. And nutrition is obviously a, some, something which uh, is not given due importance. Um, I think it's not, it's changed, but it's not, it still has a long way to go. Uh, so uh, it has come a long way, uh, right from the uh, time that, you know, you had, uh, uh, I mean, people having to seek out uh, electrolytes. Uh, I think uh, uh, brands like Univade and, you know, uh, I mean, Fast and Up and so many other brands have come in. And I think uh, what it has done is uh, earlier, uh, one had to go out and seek out uh, supplementation from, uh, I mean, friends and family who are traveling uh, into mm -hmm. India from US, etc. So I remember uh, having my uh, first uh, set of gels uh, while I was uh, traveling uh, into UK, 
and uh, I had picked up gels there and uh, come back and uh, started using it. So I think now uh, it's changed. We have at least three, four brands out there who are uh, doing their bit into the, in the into the nutrition framework. And I think now uh, uh, the community itself is much more aware. Uh, they are uh, looking forward to more uh, uh, options available. And I think that's good. And I think the journey is still going on. Uh, it has a long way to go. Uh, and uh, that's how I, I would say. Totally. Um, I agree with you, especially, you know, trying to look for supplements elsewhere. Somebody is traveling and uh, we want them to get our supplements from there and all. What do you think, Amit? What has uh, your experience been, you know, it's been over 10 years for Univet, right? So in the last 10 years, how do you think the scene has changed? Um, yeah, I mean, night and day difference. I think Vijay has summed it up pretty well. Uh, for us, in, you know, in our journey, when we started in 2010, um, nutrition just as a subject and as an industry was very, very nascent. I would say the, the dietary supplement brands back then were revital and, you know, more mainstream products that you see, uh, you see ads of on, on television. You didn't really have boutique uh, nutrition companies or supplement brands such as, you know, Unived, Fast Enough, uh, and a lot of other companies that have come out now. So for us, um, it was very difficult when we started because one, there was no market and two, because there was no market, there was no sort of history in this field, there was nothing to work off of. So everything had to be sort of created from, uh, from the ground up. But, uh, you know, it's come a long way. I mean, when we got into sports nutrition, I think 2000, end of 2013, early 2014, um, and, you know, when we were talking to runners, back then what their source of nutrition was, was either a, a GU gel brought in from the UK or from, or from the US or salted dates and almonds and um, things like that, which of course, you know, that's not the most ideal thing to consume when you're out on a, on a marathon or a half marathon. So, yeah, I mean, you know, looking at that and then fast forward to today where we have, you know, a couple of uh, companies offering endurance gels, a couple of companies offering recovery products, electrolytes and things like that. We've really created a base for nutrition and for endurance specific nutrition. So we have come a long way, but uh, the, I, I still feel there is a lot of innovation that lies ahead. So. Speaking of uh, innovation, right? So where do you think uh, we are headed as a nutrition supplement industry? Or as a consumer myself, I would like to see some new products. So do you guys have any new products that you are working on, especially particularly for endurance athletes? Not necessarily just for runners, but any endurance athletes to an extent need similar kind of nutrition, especially during the race and uh, while they are training for the races and stuff. So Amit, uh, can you shed some light on that, please? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, to answer your question, yes, we do have a lot of products that we are working on, which you know we plan to launch in the coming months and years. We always have new ideas and new concepts. But I think at this stage of where we are as a company and also where the market is in general, uh, what's more important than just launching new products every couple of months, I think what's more important is for the current consumer base to really understand how to use the products that are already available. You know, there's a lot of people who don't know how to use an energy gel or don't know when uh, to sort of integrate it into their training cycle or in their race. How often should they use it? Should they use a gel every 20 minutes, every 40 minutes, every 60 minutes? What is the decisive factor for that? Is it their pace? Is it the heat and humidity? Uh, is it other supplementary you know, products that they may be consuming like an electrolyte drink or salt capsules or other things? So I, I, I feel there is still a gap in how consumers can optimize their consumption of the current products in the market. And that is a gap that, you know, companies and consumers have to sort of work together to fulfill that gap. Once we've all matured and we're at a level where we say, okay, these are the products available and this is the best way to consume them. And I feel optimal. Then there is some scope, you know, to look at additional uh, value added products because I mean, to be honest, you don't need, 20 products, right? You only need so much to sort of support what you're doing. You don't 
really need to consume you know uh, supplements all day long so yeah uh, vijay do you have so, different yeah view? vijay um, you guys also stated that you know it's still been pretty new right it's not like uh, so many runners are right now using products all the time or something uh, so awareness yes definitely needed but what is your take on where are we headed in terms of availability of uh, these different kinds of uh, supplements particularly for endurance athletes do you think we have enough or some more innovation needed or what is um, i think i don't think any on? any company is uh, backing away from innovation i think uh, as as an as a country uh, indian pharmaceutical industry provides a majority of the products into the us market or the US, i mean european generics market right so i don't think uh, there is any lacking of cap capabilities out there in india so uh, i think the the question is little broader uh, yeah, it, it's not just about uh, running endurance athletes and uh, products it has to be about the sports ecosystem in the country and uh, that itself is in a in a, in a, in a, in, a, in, a uh, in a state of evolution right Uh, uh i mean i talk to a lot of elite athletes in different sports um and the amount of uh, knowledge uh, that the elite athletes have is still not up there i i would say that the amateur running community has much more knowledge of nutrition than a lot of the elite uh, you know uh, uh, sports people in the country the second issue is also that uh, there is very little funding in the sports industry in the country right there are so many other needs right i mean it's about i mean you have a tokyo olympics coming in uh, i mean there are so many other problems infrastructure coaching etc and nutrition is a part of it right so uh, i mean as a company we would love to introduce new products out there right but there has to be a market across the country otherwise uh, i mean it is not a self sustainable system uh, you know what i mean uh you you cannot get a new innovative product out there till the time there's a market out there right uh i'm yeah, sure there's a lot of interesting uh, uh innovation happening where uh, it will be helpful for the athletes not just the amateur runners i mean mm -hmm. at the end of the day amateur runners as amit said only need so much but there are so many elite runners out there and uh, people who are practicing different sports who would need that extra edge right i mean uh, i see a lot of uh, comments uh, comparing a morton with uh, indian uh, brands i think it's a, it's not a relevant comparison at all right because uh, i mean morton operates in a different kind of environment uh, where it, it it if you if you think if you want indian brands to do it i mean be it uh, anyone in the country obviously yes one could do it but there has to be an ecosystem out there to enable this to happen until that time it's always going to be a chicken and egg story right i mean you can always compare what's happening across the globe but at the end of the day you have to have this ecosystem up and running uh, i mean uh, right. just a last concluding thought would be that you have a lot of road running uh, road races in the country right including the hyderabad marathon mm -hmm. right uh, yes majority of the races today provide electrolytes right mm -hmm. so if there are no there is no incentive or if there is no i mean if the organizers are not providing those electrolytes then um, uh, i mean that system will not evolve right it will stop abruptly stop so i think there is a part to be played by multiple stakeholders in this and uh, mm -hmm. i think brands are prepared I, mean, i think there is absolutely great work done by a lot of brands out here uh, there are a lot of products but i need to put in a business plan out there right and 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 i need to see that the ecosystem has developed and only then there can be a sustainable kind of movement out there thank you very much and uh, amit to follow up on what you uh, stated like you know when there is a need like there are already so many existing products and everything and uh, even vijay stated that people don't have an idea of how they can use or what they need to pick up yes there is a lot of choice already is something that i feel as well so when you go as somebody who is new to supplements when they go into a store like you're talking about uh, supplement boutiques when they go there and there is there's so much information there how can somebody choose something like 
let's just talk about runners or uh, you know people who got into endurance sports how can they pick up a particular product how can they decide yes this is for me because you have you have gels and then you have electrolyte uh, powders you have electrolyte tablets in different forms so how can somebody decide what to take um, amit uh, would you yeah, like to share um, your thoughts yeah i mean there's a couple of thoughts in my mind right now you know one is what vijay spoke about uh you know the importance of every every part of the ecosystem sort of functioning towards making this uh, making this whole thing successful in terms of you know nutrition consumption and he said races have to have electrolytes on route uh that's very true but i think there's scope for improvement there as well because if you go to a race in in the us or in europe not just electrolytes they have gels on route they have recovery mixes at the end at their recovery center you know these are uh, these are areas where i feel races in india have a little more scope to integrate uh, nutrition and to integrate you know indian companies that are that are pushing the envelope on formulations on innovation on making certain products available for the runners so that is one area where where we can do a lot of work um to answer your question on how does a runner choose what is right for them you know there there is there is some responsibility on part of the company to impart knowledge and to to sort of guide them on what is required when it's required and how to best use it but the best way for a runner to really understand what is going to work for <clears throat> him or her is trial and error and that's one thing that we really say please don't wait until race day uh to sort of do what your friends are doing please use nutrition extensively uh during your training months leading up to your race so you can really understand what works for you and what doesn't because it flavors are subjective caffeine may work for someone may not work for someone it increases heart rate for some people it uh, you know works wonders for others so you really need to test products inside out in your training you need to make mistakes and after a lot of trial and error you will you know try and you will work towards uh, figuring out what works for you thank you amit uh, what do you think vijay how are there any tips let's say for somebody just guess trial and error but what would you pick first when you go where do you start when you are starting vijay your mic is in mute sorry i always say the first uh, first thing that anyone should do is to have an open mind now and that is absolutely the starting point i mean i think there is a lot of uh, you know uh, discussion about whether you need uh, any kind of supplement or any kind of nutrition at all right now the first thing that anyone should uh, accept is that it is okay to experiment right uh, and as amit said then the process starts right once you have agreed that i am ready to explore and not have a fixed mindset that this is not good this is good for me then the matter stops the journey stops you don't explore right, right. Uh, so if you have to if i have to relate it from my own personal journey i have been uh, i mean with or without fast and up i have been pretty open towards new options in supplements or supplementation right so whenever there is a product out there i would love to experiment right uh, so that takes the journey forward and then you start of, somewhere start somewhere and then you have multiple uh, you know uh, points in india data points in india like you have uh, you know the, uh, the hyderabad runners group the bangalore runners group mumbai runners group where there is sufficient amount of you know nutrition information floating around right then obviously you have somebody like you uh, who is obviously guiding uh, people on what to do what not to do in terms of nutrition right so when all this is put together you already reach a certain level in terms of what a nutrition does right mm -hmm. the next part of the journey is to kind of explore what is on offer Mm -hmm. right right and that is when uh, you know you pick up a brand you see experiment for yourself and okay this works and then you are bombarded with some other option at you and then you would you should rather experiment right you never know which works which doesn't work 
And that is when you start looking at maybe the labels and see that what is there written on the label, whether it is true or not. But having said that, uh, finally, it all depends on what works for you. Right? right? As Amit rightly said, I mean, there could be a fantastic looking product on paper, but it mm -hmm. may not really work for you. Right? It's very individualized Individual, response. Right? Yes. So I think that is, a, that is the scope of evolution of where and how you should explore nutrition. So again, coming back, I would really love people to experiment. I mean, I think the Indian uh, uh, population, Indian running community would be far better off if there is more experimentation out there and, and mm -hmm. explore for yourself and then give feedback and then the cycle continues. Right. So, yeah, I think uh, talking about experimentation and even awareness of whether people should or athletes or amateurs or anybody who's recreational runners should even start using these products. We have a question on Facebook. Mr. Ravi Lankamala is asking, is taking gel advisable? And why should one be encouraged to take gels when the runner can train without it? So, Amit, would you like to, you know, answer that? Um, well, of course, taking an, an energy gel is advisable because it is going to supply you with, uh, you know, calories, carbohydrate-based calories, which are very important as you continue on to your race. Um, replenish your glycogen stores, help you stay more focused if it has some caffeine. So yes, it is advisable. Um, why should you take it when you can, was it, what, did he ask why he should take it when he yeah. can complete a race yeah, without taking one? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to. I mean, you can, you can certainly, certainly walk, jog, run and finish, uh, you know, half marathon or full marathon without taking any uh, energy gels. Uh, but then again, it, it comes down to you know, are you looking at optimal performance? Are you looking at maintaining your pace? Are you looking at pushing the envelope and trying to finish a little faster? Uh, are you looking at finishing stronger? You know, these are questions and these are new discoveries that you will find yourself pursuing as you move further into your journey uh, of running. So at the beginning, everyone has this question. Everyone says, you know, I don't really need a lot. I, I, can, I can do it with just dates I'm and almonds. I'm doing it without anything so uh, yeah but uh, but as time goes on you know you become competitive you do realize that supplements are not really crutches they are they complement the effort that you put in to your training and they help you sustain a faster a faster pace longer they help you finish much stronger and yeah of course you should you should consume products why not so uh vijay i i understand what uh, i know Amit has recommended that, yes, you would benefit from it, but is there a point where somebody decides, yes, I should start taking supplements now? Let's say somebody who is just running for the sake of running or just to stay healthy, not thinking about races or improving their time or anything. I just want to run because I like running and I can only run for about five to 10 kilometers is the longest I can run. Some, somebody's mindset, let's say. Would there still be need for gels in that scenario? Yeah, I think uh, I would not want to be bogged down by this question of gels itself, right? I mean, mm -hmm. then we, we talk about a specific thing of a specific right. product in the portfolio. I mean, I think the question, if it is larger, whether mm -hmm. you need supplementation, I mean, broadly, yes, right? Uh, uh, because there's always going to be a debate whether I need it for five kilometers or 2.5 right. kilometers or 10 kilometers, right? Uh, but I mean, as Amit said, it is very simple, right? Uh, uh, I mean, you typically, what do you have? You have a banana, mm -hmm. right? You have yeah, a there is some fuel involved. What, 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 what do you, I mean, what does it provide? It, it provides energy, yes. right? Uh, I mean, I, I used to love watching um, the tennis matches. In fact, yesterday's match, match between Djokovic and uh, Nadal, I mean, was a classic game and they couldn't have sustained it if uh, they didn't, didn't have energy, right? right. So, even the elite athletes would have a banana in between, maybe have a gel in between, right? So what a gel actually does is replace something like a banana or a date, which is probably a little bit more clumsier when it comes mm -hmm. to pursuing an activity which is not friendly to you and uh, you know provide you with something where there is science involved, something which is yes. formulated for you, right? That is all it does. Ease of right? usage as well, yeah. Correct. 
so i think that's where i think the the moment you open your mind uh, and then this debate of 2.5 kilometers 5 kilometers 10 kilometers uh, i mean can go on right uh, mm -hmm. for me uh, in fact uh, uh, i started uh, running a marathon using two gels today mm -hmm. i use 10 gels now mm -hmm. i mean it's a matter of debate at the end of the day right it finally boils down to what suits you what gives you energy and then you go on so i think that's where the debate is and I, I think it's also worth mentioning, you know, uh, it, it also depends on how precise you want to be with your race plan. Mm -hmm. Today, we know that gels, by and large, gels have about 100 calories a packet. Mm -hmm. So you can be very precise by saying, I'm going to consume 200 calories an hour if I take one gel every 30 minutes. And based on this precise calculation, 200 calories an hour, if I'm going to run a three-hour marathon, you know, this works for me. I've done it in training. Or I need three gels an hour. You can't really do that with bananas, dates, and, you know, other sort of uh, uh, options out there. So, yeah. It helps you fine-tune your plan as well. Right. And uh, we have another question from uh, Mr. Ravi Rankamala. Could you give on the salts to be okay i think our opinion on salts to be taken for daily running with respect to season like if you should take something different in summer versus when you are running during winter when you sweat a lot less yes so and for long runs what do they need to carry along like the runners when you're going on a long run i'm assuming long run is defined as somewhere you run for more than two hours wait uh, what do you need to carry along with you, whether it is gels or tablets or electrolytes in some other form? So, um, Vijay, would you care to contribute? Yeah, so again, uh, I mean, again, uh, there could be multiple perspectives, right? Uh, uh, so I think uh, for me, uh, the simplest thing that anyone should have, and I think I, because I sincerely believe in it as a, a runner as well and as a person who has been associated with nutrition is that uh, it is ideal uh, if you have some kind of electrolytes going into your system. Now, how the electrolytes get into your system is a matter of choice, right? Uh, I think uh, I prefer uh, electrolytes going into my system, even if it's one hour, two hours, two and a half hours. The rest of the things can be supplementary, like, you know, I mean, you might use gels, you might use something else, but I think uh, for me, uh, water mm -hmm. plus those electrolytes uh, do make a lot of sense uh, and you can probably never go wrong and in terms of the question of you know uh, uh, whether you need to have more of those electrolytes it's yes uh, uh, because typically when you have when a person sweats more uh, you need to replenish more of those electrolytes right. if a person is sweating less then uh, uh, you know you need to replenish less in fact, I can also share that uh, uh, in certain cases in, in elite athletes, uh, uh, even brands and companies have formulated specific electrolytes mm -hmm. uh, for specific people yes. who actually sweat a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. So that is at a different level because that is more pers personalized, right? But as amateurs, what one would typically do is uh, you kind of uh, do it, I mean, I mean I, I, either on advice or on trial and error, you kind of increase or decrease the intake of those electrolytes based on how the body uh, feels right. over a period of time. So that is in a broad nutshell how one would go about it. Mm -hmm. So to summarize uh, Mr. Ravi Lankamala's both questions, what do you need to take seasonally? Again, it depends on how your body is responding to that particular season. For somebody who is sweating more during summers than winters, the electrolytes probably are lost even more during summers. At the same time, regarding gels, when we are talking about when to replenish, when do you need those extra calories? You know, um, as a nutritionist, when some runners take up running just to lose some weight, in those cases, in fact, it backfires to take too many gels without having enough knowledge of how you are refueling your body during the runs and whether it is needed. And I think it all comes down to what is the purpose of your run? Why are you running? What is the goal for that particular run? And uh, if you are training for a particular event, 
then you train accordingly and then you take gels or plan uh, to take gels electrolytes and all those things accordingly is what uh, i gathered and added some of my thoughts to so uh, do you guys agree that we summarized it okay yeah i think so i think vijay uh, sort of you know hit the nail on the head when he spoke about the importance of electrolytes the only thing that i you know i'd like to add is if it is a long run you may want to consider some carbohydrate mm -hmm. use as well even though you feel you may not need it uh, just because it will shorten your recovery time post run definitely so yes. so that is something that you know you should consider and uh, again at least for me the choice of nutrition largely depends on intensity and duration of you know your your uh, your your run workout so, yeah a run yes so the same person in the same weather conditions you know everything else being the same uh intensity and duration will be the decis decisive factors okay. on you know on what the the nutrition intake what for that day is choose yeah thank you very much so now i have uh, a question about you know now we have all this new supplements coming into the market and i know for a fact at least in the us how they are regulated and uh, how a person can pick a particular product being assured that okay this has the dosage of so and so ingredient as it is specified on the label do we have anything like that in india like are the supplement is the supplement industry regulated as closely as the pharmaceutical industry is uh, amit um in my opinion no but i believe vijay may have a better um, well rounded answer on this because he's sort of in both industries uh, or has been in you know in both industries but yeah it's I, I, and it's not only pertinent to india i don't think even in the us the, the dietary supplement industry is certainly not as as regulated uh, you know as strictly regulated as the pharma industry uh, and that's mm -hmm. that's the case world over mm -hmm. so you know a lot depends on what individual certifications each dietary supplement company is pursuing um you know iso gmp or some of them even even want uh, edqm and fda approvals depending on you know the size of of the company so it depends on that and then of course you know just the the value system and the pedigree that that the company sort of you know works on so mm -hmm. so uh vijay as uh, amit said you you have experience in both uh, pharmaceutical and nutraceutical or dietary supplement area so would you like to share some of that with so i think i agree with amit uh, on this uh, because uh, that's the way it is uh, but maybe adding a little bit uh, more on that uh, would be that uh, obviously in any country there would be some regulatory body right i mean mm -hmm. in india it is say fssai you know uh, having some uh, uh, sanctity or you know uh, official uh, stamp to the entire process right mm -hmm. uh, but post that it is going to be uh, the responsibility of each company in a way a self regulatory method mm -hmm. which most of the companies would follow or should follow right uh, because in the long term in the long run uh, i think it's very important for any company to have its own standards in place mm -hmm. and uh, many of the companies i think uh, also have some knowledge of the pharmaceutical framework Uh, which is mm -hmm. more regulated in terms of gmps in terms of right. quality assurance at the end of the day there are a lot of practices from that industry which gets pulled into the nutrition industry mm -hmm. right uh, but it also depends on how much each individual or each company uh, wants to follow that and upgrade their own systems to it right mm -hmm. uh, but having said that there is one more possibly uh, 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 an approach a lot of companies could follow uh which is not uh mandatory but i think and also not uh i would say cost uh, wise very effective but uh, a lot of companies would also want to do a, a certification like amit said right. uh maybe do it with a foreign authority or agency 
uh, in our own case, uh, I mean, I think uh, I think everyone knows, and uh, uh, we we have a certification, or we do send our pro few of our products around four to five products for uh, uh, informed sport, informed choice certification to the UK. Mm -hmm. Now, the purpose there is uh, to make sure that the products are free of banned substances, and mm -hmm. there is a authority or agency which does. a lot of checks on you know approximately around 300 such ingredients and tells whether that product is clean or not mm -hmm. right and that gives a lot of uh, satisfaction or uh, comfort to the athletes who are using that product especially who are going to the olympics or you know who are playing cricket at the elite level etc uh, one another one other thing that the companies could do possibly is uh, send their uh, products for you know testing whether it is uh, uh, the same quantity as which is claimed the label or not right yes uh, now these are uh, i mean i think the audience should understand that these are uh, additional things that a company does based mm -hmm. on what their needs are and what they want to do uh, okay. i think um, since it is a more of a friendly running community i just want to also emphasize the fact that all this costs money for the for the for the company right company. Uh, so at the end of the day uh, when the system evolves when a product reaches a certain mass right you could possibly do a lot more certifications mm -hmm. and, and i also would request the audience to be more appreciative of such uh, you know uh, certifications which are in place because that mm -hmm. gives a fillip back to the company to do more right right so i think it's it's always going to be a very uh, uh, you know a uh, synergistic kind of process uh, uh, as we move forward i i agree with you i know especially regarding certifications and all because um, there were few studies conducted not here in the us and even in the uk where uh, scientists have randomly picked up supplement samples from the shelves and uh, unfortunately there are so many cases in which not even 10% of the active ingredient was there inside the supplement so in this case i think uh, this is the kind of information when you come across you become skeptical of whatever products are available out there in the market and having the certification makes you trust the product okay somebody else has verified because i am not going to uh, really be able to check whether there is uh, 400 IU or uh, 1600 IU or 1000 IU of vitamin D3, as is mentioned on the label. So the only way I would know is okay. There is another concerned party who has certified that this product is, uh, you know, has whatever it says or claims that it has. So absolutely. So uh, as you are saying, it is the companies at this point that are taking the stand and uh, that are also safeguarding. the safety as well as efficacy of the product that they are putting on the shelf um so one one additional point uh, uh lehri i think yeah. the two things one you mentioned was that uh, uh, in, in a study which was done yes uh, uh, brands in us europe yes also had contaminants also had yeah. a lot of uh, things which are wrong so yes. i think that is a point that it is not very specific to india alone so it is a global problem yes and that is something that uh, all of us should uh, you know uh, uh, agree upon mm -hmm. uh, the second uh, thing that i would want to stress is that uh, all imported products need not be clean mm -hmm. right because at the end of the day uh, they all come through a supply chain that you don't know the ingredient quality matters right so I it's mean, about uh, who your supplier of ingredients is no, also uh, what i'm trying to say is that a product which is made in us or in mm -hmm. europe passes through multiple hands through multiple channels mm -hmm. and then comes to the consumer in india yeah so But, i mean there are the, the, the biggest the, one of the biggest problems of the nutrition industry is a lot of fake products out there yes you are never really sure whether what is being produced in a factory in us or europe reaches you in the mm -hmm. manner that it should reach i mean otherwise you would not have uh, so many issues of you know doping etc in the country right mm -hmm. uh, and 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 issues of fake etc so 
I would I would really think that uh, if there are companies in India doing a good job, mm-hmm. uh, I would probably trust or bank upon those companies rather mm-hmm. than you know uh, going after global uh, products as long as things are mostly the same. I mean, that's mm-hmm. the point I was trying to make. Understood. Yeah, unless they have some extra advantage, <clears throat> sir. some kind of advantage over the products that are uh, products from companies that are based out of india and the product that is marketed or manufactured in india so okay. i think i think to add to that you know the only advantage that they have is the fact that they are either an american or a european brand there is absolutely no other advantage that at least to my mind that a company mm-hmm. in the us would have over a company in india because today the nutraceuticals or the ingredients that we are using by and large are the same mm-hmm. you know the difference would be uh, for example the difference would be either a conventional ashwagandha extract or a patented branded clinically studied and clinically validated ashwagandha extract this mm-hmm. is the choice that as a, that we have as a manufacturer so if if someone in india is using a clinically validated ingredient which is the same clinically validated ingredient used in europe which by the way is probably manufactured in india right. you know so so there is no other advantage other than one it's made overseas mm-hmm. and two unfortunately the perception in india is oh if it's american it's better yeah it's- we don't we don't want to bargain if it's from the us we don't want to ask questions uh, yeah. as we just said we don't really want to know the supply chain has it changed hands 10 times has it gone through asian countries uh, you know saudi arabia where has it how has it sort of trickled down into this market it that's mm-hmm. never at the front of our minds mm-hmm. but when it comes to an indian company the first question you know is are you certified has yeah. vara certified you okay forget the point that vada vada doesn't really certify anyone you have to go to inform sport or you have to go to bscg or one of these agencies mm-hmm. to get uh, you know a stamp that you're free of banned substances so i find that the indian consumer doesn't really know what the question is do they want to know if the product is banned from is free from banned substances do they want to know if it's of high quality it can be free of banned substances but still be of low quality right so like what not is have the question of what's promised correct so you know we need to frame the question correctly and we need to mm-hmm. recognize that there is no ip that an american company or a european company can have over us if by and large the ingredients being used are, are pretty much the same the science is there yeah we know how to formulate we have shown that and all of us so many indian companies have shown that with the great product launches that have that we've seen in this field over the last couple of years so mm-hmm. you know we need to trust the work that uh, that our own companies are doing and we need to try the products and really integrate them into our uh, training cycles thank you thank you very much I, um that's actually you know I, i myself got a lot of information from this particular discussion uh, this question is actually for you amit being a vegan and uh, looking for supplements when you started in the beginning i know quite a few supplements are animal based as well you know there are probably plant alternatives even before but uh, conventionally they have been animal based supplements right when you think of calcium or when you think of d3 or even for that matter until unless uh, you consider plant omega 3s even dha epa all these things have been predominantly animal based so how did you um, you know gather information or how tough was it for you to set the standards for manufacturing of vegan products when you started doing this yeah i mean i you know i i don't again i don't think information gathering is that difficult it is out there as a manufacturer as a brand owner as a company you always have options of <clears throat> different ingredients at your disposal uh, i think what really matters is what are you pursuing mm-hmm. for us we are vegan from day one we started as a vegan company um 
and we've maintained that. And so it was very important for us to ensure that we don't do fish oil, uh, that we don't do sheep wool based vitamin D3. And we concentrate rather on pursuing plant based uh, or you know non animal um, alternatives. And it was difficult in the beginning because you know certain things like maybe an algae based DHA was was easier to integrate um, you know right off the back because that industry already existed, but so, certain certain other ingredients were a di little difficult to sort of you know come by and and integrate. So it has taken some time, um, but that's not to say that it's not possible. I, again, it it depends on you know. Do you have to submit a business plan? Do you have to reach certain numbers in year one, year two, year three? Or do you have the freedom to sort of sit back and say, I want to do it this way. It may take some more time, but this is the way I'm going to do it. So it, 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 all, it all comes down to, you know, the values and the, um, uh, the ethos and the DNA at the company. What you define yourself as. Sure. Thank you. Uh, so this question is... Um, this from let's see so what are the data points we need to look at for your products like you know what should they look at say they want to buy something off the shelf uh, a pre-workout drink or something so what should they be looking at on the label this question is from mr ragu pitambaram what are the data points we need to look at for your products to understand the implications of long-term use? If they intend to use it. Uh, Vijay, would you care to answer? I mean, firstly, I think labels will not tell you uh, what are the implications of long-term use, right? Uh, a label only tells you what is there. Right. right? Uh, so I think... Uh, uh, the, the issue is that um, ideally you would want to be advised when, whenever you're going for something which is more complicated, especially mm -hmm. you talked about pre-workouts, right? Uh, I mean, from a running perspective, there are more simpler pre-workouts. Uh, I mean, I would rather say pre-race or pre-training. But when you go into the other side of the spectrum, which is pre-workouts, which are being used more by the, the, the bodybuilders, the fitness segment, mm -hmm. you have a lot of such options available in the market right now right. Uh, then the problem gets a little murkier because you have so many ingredients being put in uh, and uh, so and you will not even know uh, what are the actual ingredients out there right mm -hmm. because the end purpose of such probably products is uh, to give that sudden impact I mean, when you have a pre-workout, you have to feel something post taking right. that pre-workout, which helps you do something very quickly or effectively. So it is somewhere stuck in your mind that there has to be that sen sensation, right? Mm -hmm. So if you don't have that, then you start questioning whether this product is good or not. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, so uh, my own advice uh, typically uh, would be that uh, uh, just, I mean, on the, on the question of pre-workouts, if you want to say, uh, mm -hmm. just be a little bit more careful when you start using more complicated forms of pre-workout, uh, especially from uh, the e-commerce channels, etc. Uh, but I have to say that uh, by and far, uh, when you look at what is available in the running side, mm -hmm. uh, they are pretty straightforward, simple things, right? Uh, you have certain ingredients which are known to kind of Simulate, stimulate, uh, you know, uh, your, your training, your race or something like that. So there, there is a lot of literature available as to what it does, what it doesn't do, et cetera, right? And I think at the end of the day, you could also probably check out literature available, talk to nutritionists and get a sense of it. Uh, Long-term implication is also available if you really look at literature around, uh, mm -hmm. uh, which, which should really give you what is safe and what is not. Yeah, so I think uh, this also answers uh, one of the questions Mr. Gangula Rajesh were asked. He asked to suggest a pre-workout drink for regular runners. So either of you have any particular drink in mind for a pre-workout. What I understand from what you said, Vijay, is uh, it depends on why you are taking the pre-workout drink. You have to feel like, okay, this is going to get me to 
do the workout in a better manner more effectively and most of the times if it is for a runner it would help them run for longer duration or faster or at least get into that mode of consistent running so any suggestions uh, amit any particular uh, product you would like to recommend drink particularly um yeah we do have a pre um run pre workout product for for runners it's a very simple and clean formulation of just two ingredients which is simple and complex carb and it's primarily been formulated to give you you know instant and sustained energy release which is what you know you would be looking for when you're consuming a pre run product because you're not going to consume it if you're on a you know a, a 5k or a 10k you're only going to consume it when you're on a one and a half two hour three hour training run or a or a race and uh, loading up on calories and having that continuous you know um, energy flow is is important so that's what we have a uh, very different from uh, traditional gym specific formulations which you know typically have 10 or 12 different ingredients um and again the purpose of those products is very different as as which i rightly said thank you thank you amit uh vijay this question is uh, I, i'd like for you to throw some light on this this is from mr gautam potineni he is asking what would be an optimum post workout or post training recovery regimen from a nutrition perspective like should you even be taking any kind of products or just let your body recover well uh, i am not a nutritionist so uh, i am not uh, technically qualified to you, you certainly do have products for post workout yeah, yeah. so recovery I, right I, 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 I think to uh, uh, take a mix of my own experience and the nutrition uh, scenario would be that I think obviously uh, there has to be a mix of uh, carbohydrates and some uh, amino acids which goes into the body uh, to to help you recover uh, because that's what uh, you would need uh, and uh, there's also science to say that you would need a, a protein mix or amino acids to go into the body. quickly before that the window closes which is which could mm-hmm. be half an hour or one hour uh, right. and that's been uh, established uh, across right mm-hmm. uh, there is also enough studies to say that uh, you need to keep hydrating uh, you cannot stop hydrating uh, so that is also pretty essential uh, as we go along uh, and then obviously uh, for me uh, sleep is the the best form of recovery right i mean whatever uh, products supplements can do will do but mm-hmm. i think uh, sleep is most essential uh, coming to products specific brands etc i think there are a lot of things available in the market you really need to try them out uh, based on what the basics are and then you kind of establish what works for you and then go ahead with it as you said uh, a right mix of carbohydrates and either amino acids or proteins in one form or the other uh, so are there different uh, products where you can take them immediately as you are saying during the window of next uh, 30 to 45 minutes after you finish your workout as well as something that will help you if you take it as a post workout that will help you if you take it about 2 hours later after you finish the workout because the recovery is a continuous thing right it's not like uh, your body is going to recover for 30 minutes or 45 minutes or 1 hour after you finish the workout but after that it's just going to go in its regular mode so the recovery are there any products to help you with the recovery 2 hours or half a day after you finish your workout as well especially after sunday long runs amit you want to take that yeah sure um i mean you know both both fast and up and us have products that you can consume immediately after your workout Mm-hmm. um and they're both portable products so they're easy to carry around and you can take them you know out of your car or at your at the stadium or wherever you're finishing your run but uh, again a product to consume 2 or 3 hours you know post run is a, is a good protein drink because that is something that is going to help you help your muscles recover but again i think it really largely depends on your overall training program you know if 
if you're doing maybe 15 hours a week then you're also dealing with some inflammation then mm-hmm. you may also want to consume something for your inflammation um if you're not that high up and you're a little lower then you're looking at protein to recover from your hard and long workouts not necessarily from every single run so you know it, it, you you start peeling the layers of the onion once you sort of get into it but uh, but yeah these are these are the options that uh, that are conventionally used thank you thank you amit so we have a question from uh, mr murli this is for uh, both of you how do you guys work on consumer education what are you guys doing in this regard how does a runner or an endurance athlete know about your products uh, which i would you like to start answering the question so from from our own perspective uh, at fasten up it has been evident over the last 5 6 years that uh, we really believe in uh, working with the communities out there uh, so you would uh, typically see us uh you know working with small micro groups in each of the city uh probably going to their morning runs at 4 o'clock 5 o'clock uh trying to talk to them and educate them uh primarily it may not be about the brand itself because i think uh as uh, stakeholders we all want the first the point that nutrition is important to be uh percolated into the community and then the brand choice comes right So mm-hmm. I think it's a mix of that process. So for us, it's always been uh, a lot of tough work, morning work, getting in, getting up in those mornings in multiple cities, uh, going out there. That is on the physical front. Uh, but apart from that, uh, digitally, you would have seen us doing a lot of webinars, mm-hmm. uh, doing a lot of nutrition sessions, uh, which may not be typically to do with the brand itself, uh, because brand uh, mm-hmm. uh, can be a part of it. but it's to do with nutrition right uh, and then obviously uh, i think a lot of indian companies uh, have also i mean as it's as is the case across the world you have the concept of you know uh, key opinion leaders and influencers and stuff like that uh, at at some level uh, they do the brand role but i think they also uh, what they do is they also try to propagate the concept of nutrition right, right. so uh, at the end of the day what it does is it puts nutrition back into spotlight mm-hmm. there is a debate happening there if all these activities don't happen then it didn't you don't have anything to debate right, right. Uh, uh when you when you talk about which product is good which product is not good whether you want it or not all those questions will, will be relevant only when you have I just yeah hi hello andy yeah yeah the time of benefits coffee sorry yeah so um i i think uh, i understand what you're saying it's not just about marketing your own brand when you conduct these educational sessions it's more to do with bringing awareness to the potential customer or consumer about availability of the products and also the importance overall of nutrition and particularly how these products play a role in fulfilling the nutritional needs of an athlete or uh, even an endurance runner or uh, you know somebody who just picked up running so um amit uh, would you like to share your thoughts on this any any aspects like how unived is uh, promoting nutrition in general or uh, talking about your products or educating people on what to use how to use what is available out there etc yeah i think traditionally the same sort of um, methods that vijay has already spoken about uh, in our case you know maybe we have not been able to do it at the uh, at the level and at the scale at which uh, uh, you know vijay in the same and you know the desire always is to educate the customer on the importance of nutrition uh on the importance of the right type of formulations and eventually you know empower them to make the right uh informed buying decisions for themselves and i think that's the responsibility of the team and of of the brand and the company uh, uh yeah so that is something that you know 
we're focused on and we're trying to pursue. Thank you. And uh, as you both rightly said, it is, uh, you know, it's sort of a collective responsibility to educate in order to expand the ecosystem and develop it the way you want it as well, right? It is, uh, it is a necessary step to even bring in new products in future or uh, increase the marketability of existing products as well. So. Ah, absolutely. Uh, you know, it's funny you said it's a collective responsibility. It reminded me of a couple of years ago, I met uh, uh, Amai from um, uh, Enerzal, you know, mm -hmm. from FDC, uh, the, the parent company. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we were sitting and chatting and some runners walked by because this was at an expo. And they said, oh, Enerzal and Univet competitors sitting together. And, you know, I was like, no, we're not competitors. We're contributors, right? right. We're all working for the same purpose, to contribute right. and to educate people on the importance and to bring light on nutrition, which is still uh, very nascent in, in the country and has a lot of uh, potential and catching up for people to go on. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So we have uh, we have a question from Nagesh. Do age and other considerations come up for people to use supplements, or uh, is it uh, how should one approach nutrition from an age standpoint? Can let's say a fifteen-year-old who has just picked up cycling or uh, long-distance running and who started running half marathons, can they also use your supplements? Uh, would you like to share your thoughts, Vijay, please? So I think I, I would like to approach it uh, in two ways. One, there is the safety per se of mm -hmm. products, right? I mean, so that is there from a regulatory standpoint. Um, you have the regulations of India, which says that this is the RDA, this is how much you can take. And, you know, uh, there, are, there are sufficient guidelines saying that uh, people above the age of 12 years can take it, people above the age of uh, two years or four years can take it. Uh, I, I typically say, uh, I mean, even kids take French fries, for example, right? I mean, whether Nobody it is, regulates those. Yeah, whether, whether it is great to take French fries, it's up for debate, right? But more importantly, I think as a brand, as, as, as a responsible, I think, parent, I mean, for me, uh, I have uh, two daughters. Uh, the elder one is uh, 14 years old and, and mm -hmm. she uh, does uh, do a little bit of, uh, you know, sports and, you know, stuff like that. Uh, so I uh, typically would uh, uh, not do anything to any anybody else, which I wouldn't do with my daughter, right? I mean, that's that that's the line that I would draw, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, so typically, uh, I mean, it's again going to be a personal kind of opinion. Uh, uh, um, uh, so uh, children, uh, typically, uh, I mean, until unless there are any huge nutritional gaps, which are identified mm -hmm. by doctors or nutritionists or whatever, uh, would not need any additional supplementation on their own, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so till the age of, I think, 12, 13, 14 years, I would really advise them to, you know, uh, uh, you know eat real food, uh, mm -hmm. eat healthy, right? Uh, and have sufficient amounts of carbohydrates, proteins, etc., which will help them, right? Uh, mm -hmm. The only thing that I would probably... Uh, advice or request them is again water and electrolytes because that is something which is universal for anyone mm -hmm. having said that uh, what i would also say that is it doesn't mean any of the products that we make any of the companies make are by nature harmful mm -hmm. right it is not to say that i mean the right. same way i said french fries are not harmful right i mean if you take it once twice thrice it is not going to harm you right at that mm -hmm. instant but it is about uh, what you want to do, right? So typically, uh, my own uh, outlook on this is by the time you hit 15 to 20, that is when you also start being more competitive, put in more efforts, etc. And that is the point that you need that extra bit because you need faster recovery or because you have you are spending almost six, seven hours, eight mm -hmm. hours training. And that is when your body needs a little bit more. But having said that, finally, uh, always good to talk to nutritionists, talk to people who are knowledgeable, and then get that guidance to, you know, uh, uh, whether to incorporate products. or what to. Thank you for that. So, Amit, uh, as an extrapolation to this, 
no he spoke mostly about uh, youngsters and people like people who are in their teens and then in their early 20s and all let's talk about people who are getting into the sport of running at a very later age of say above 50 and all so what does it mean for them when it comes to choosing supplements at that age because sometimes uh, they probably are even starting running because their doctor advised them to do so so can you think of any scenarios where they shouldn't be taking supplements or they would benefit from taking the supplements like you know both sides of the coin um i mean if we have to generalize then of course the general sort of response is yes you need your electrolytes yes you need some additional protein to help you recover um and again depending on your volume you may need some carbohydrate intake you know to help with energy um but then if we once we start getting getting into specifics if you're 50 plus uh, let's say you have joint pain okay you probably need a supplement to help you or you probably are on a supplement to help you with your joint pain if you're not that's something you may want to consider if you have uh, uh, you know if you have heart conditions or if you have certain other conditions and you you may not want to consume caffeine too much so i think you know generally speaking there is a general prescription but then at that age it it also depends on various other factors stress levels weight um you know history medical history and things like that and then then you can get into specifics and talk about uh, you know what the right regimen or supplement regimen or supplement stack would be for that person right if they are already taking something and if there are any potential uh, nutrient nutrient interactions in terms of taking different supplements at the same time like you said there, there, there's a lot of people that we speak to who are 50 plus and you know they 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 find it very difficult to fall asleep mm mm-hmm. because they're dealing with stress levels maybe work related family related or you know what have you so it's very difficult for them to fall asleep so they need something to assist them uh you know with better sleep either duration of sleep or quality of sleep so again it depends on you know case to case and you have to get a little personalized when it comes to that age right yeah thank you very much for your input on these um we just have uh, so i think we are almost running out of time so i'll just ask one last question uh, how do supplements help this is from uh, ragu for both of you how do supplements help in efficient fat burning how do these work vis a vis using the body fat reserves in an endurance activity because uh, as i said multiple times some of the runners actually start running because they want to burn fat so are there any supplements available to help them do that more efficiently uh, amit would you like to share something on that please i think the i mean the fat burning um ability of a person will will generally evolve as they evolve as a runner so mm-hmm. you know the more seasoned runner you are uh the better you will fluctuate between fat and carbohydrate uh, uh energy sources you're not always only burning fat it is the slow fuel but you know you're you're you're, you're fluctuating between both when you're at that level uh when you talk about supplements that will assist you in burning fat i mean you know there's mct based products which are fat based um energy uh but i i i don't think i don't think per se there is a product which you can consume and say because i consume this product and i'm going to go for a run i am going to solely burn fat as my sole uh you know fuel source thank you vijay any yeah. thoughts on that well i think uh, we have to end the session this itself will yeah, warrant yeah. uh, one yeah. hour session i think uh, we this is our last question actually that, i promise that, like that so i think uh, the point amit said is uh, correct i think there are two ways basically one is to make sure if your body can itself burn the fat by whatever mm-hmm. you do there are a lot of techniques that i know ragu personally so i think he has been following a lot of things that uh, uh that 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 helps burn fat 
but uh, but but i mean if you go through the supplementation road then there are few products which i mean said uh, you know things like ncp maybe carnitine or whatever but i think these are two schools of thought right at the end of the day uh, and then you'll have to see the studies vis a vis one against the other right. and then look at what is available and then you have to experiment it on yourself right and then discover for yourself so that's the way it works yes. yeah i just i just realized yeah, I, that the I, I question may be from maybe from raghul who's based in chennai and i uh, the last time i met him he was at uh, 4% body fat so i think you know my advice would be stop trying to pursue that otherwise you're just going to disappear raghul we won't we won't see you because you're already so lean um yeah yeah my two cents uh, if there carbohydrates are, are our friends please Yes, Please embrace carbohydrates. Absolutely, you know, if there is somebody with four percent body fat and still trying to lose fat, uh, there is something called essential fat for a reason that everybody's body should have. Yes, it is different for men and women, but absolutely, you should have some fat. So please, uh, Raghu, with four percent body fat, stop trying to lose more fat. And uh, I think uh, we covered. quite a bit and yes as usual we do have some more questions still coming up but thank you very much for uh, taking your valuable time and spending it with us enlightening us and answering a lot of our questions about supplementation and uh, how to choose what to choose and also how to go about it how to you know how to be open minded and not say that oh no supplements are not for me or go to the other extreme saying yes i can do everything with just supplements and uh, just to add to it i also think supplements should be treated as the name suggests as supplements and not as a replacements for the actual food that is supposed to be primarily your uh, you know nutrient provider so with that i would like to offer to devi for a vote of thanks thank you very much vijay thank you very much amit it's been a great session thank you yeah thank you over to you devi yeah thank you larry for facilitating today's webinar um i think nutrition is always a very debatable topic and supplements are much more so not to mention uh, the polarity around veganism nowadays So Amit and Vijay, we are really glad to have been able to pick your brains on some of these very interesting topics. Appreciate you taking out your time, a valuable time, and sharing your experiences and learnings with us today. And to our audience, thank you so much for choosing to engage with us over the hour. The recording of this event will be available on our Hyderabad Runners Facebook as well as the HR Hyderabad Marathon YouTube page. Feel free to rewatch and share it across to others who can benefit. Use the hashtag Hyderabad Runners and hashtag Beyond the Track. We've also relaunched Hyderabad Runners newsletter rendezvous this time in June. Please visit please visit the link in the Facebook comment section to review it and to write to us at newsletter at hyderabadrunners dot com if you'd like to submit any article. Tenth July, the second Saturday of the next month, we will be back again with our next webinar. Details of the guests will be shared with you shortly. Do continue to stay safe and stay healthy. Until then, this is Vedi from Hyderabad Runners signing off. Adieu, see ya, sayonara, bye bye.